Right, so today I want to talk about British axes. Now there's a lot on the internet about American axes, but uh, very little I can find on British axes. So I'm just going to give a brief overview. Now, in Britain it's important to understand the historical context. Where in America you had tons and tons of timber, Britain had a real timber shortage for hundreds of years. Too much population combined with not enough land to grow enough forestry um, meant that big forestry wasn't really a thing. Part of the reason why so many settlers went to America early on was because Britain was facing such a timber shortage um, that they really needed the men to go across there and cut timber and then ship it back to Britain, particularly large um, tall straight trees for building masts for the Royal Navy. I mean, if you think about the height of some of the masts in the Royal Navy ships, um, you, could un you couldn't really find any trees in Britain at the time like that. They'd been cut down and uh, took a far too long to replace. So with Britain, um, heating wasn't really done with big rounds of timber you'd think about today. Um, in England you weren't allowed to cut down trees um, if you didn't own the land. And the land was mostly owned by big uh, landowners with estates. So the average person didn't have access to big firewood. They were allowed to go and gather small firewood sticks and anything really on the ground. Um, but no tree cutting. Also in Britain you had a massive coal industry. So coal mining was really providing most of the heating and uh, fuel needs for the country. Therefore the common axe really isn't designed for tree felling and firewood processing. The most common kind of axe you'll find in Britain is the Kent pattern. It's quite a strange looking axe really, but it's got a much wider blade than uh, a comparative weight of American axe. This tiny little 300 gram head has almost the same edge length as a two and a quarter pound American boys axe. This one's pretty much the same apart from it doesn't have a pole. This must be a cheaper model um, where the eyes just wrapped, but most of them have poles. You also get uh, larger versions, um, two and a half pounds. The heaviest I've seen is really four pounds. So I'm sure there's heavy ones out there, but uh, the design's just the same scaled up really. So the average British person really isn't interested in felling large trees and processing firewood. So I think that really shows in the design. These axes really aren't intended for big tree felling. While they can handle some light chopping, um, such as doing coppice work where you're not really cutting anything really above arm thickness. They're excellent for carpentry, carving. They also make quite good hedge laying axes. So the shorter handle combined with a heavier weight means that you can access in between um, stems and get enough power with a very, very short swing. And the large edge helps. They can split like kindling and stuff. Um, you know, they're not really designed for heavy splitting. All in all, they make an excellent all-rounder with an emphasis on sort of carpentry and carving work, not so much uh, designed for chopping. And these uh, Kent axes have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. I think the earliest recording I've seen of these uh, is 1600, but I'm sure they're around a lot longer than that. So your everyday man, he might have one of these axes, slightly larger, or um, a smaller hatchet. Instead of a hatchet, uh, bill hooks were also used very heavily. Um, there's just thousands of bill hook patterns. Bill hooks were really the main tool used and uh, more common than axes, I'd say. Again, you're only doing coppicing and hedge work, and uh, a bill hook like this is very, very handy. You're not looking at chopping massive stuff. Now, if you were a professional lumberjack, your tools would change. This uh, six pound Welsh pattern is the main axe of a tree feller. These were used for rounding a tree so you're removing all the roots around the base so you can cut the stump as slow as possible. Now with the timber shortage in Britain cutting a low stump is extremely important. These axes are heavier than you'll typically find in America and uh, I think that's because you're only really swinging them for five minutes at a time or less American axes are designed more for longer work since that was the main tool. So you'll typically see like three and a half to four pounds, whereas this is a six pounder. And they went up to seven. I've heard of 10 pound ones, but I've not actually seen them. But uh, really these are absolutely massive axes and 
very very difficult to swing. They've got a very very thin profile and uh, quite a wide bit. Now you also see an axe that looks very very similar to this. Uh, I used to own one but I've sold it now which is a miner's axe and it has the same general shape but the pole is much much more square and longer so the pole on it comes to about here and the bit is uh, longer again but also not as wide. Now a lot of people get mixed up between these two and uh, the Welsh patterns and the miner's axes and the miner's axes were designed for uh, cutting up pit props to fit them down in a mine so they've got very short handles very heavy hedge six to seven pounds and they're designed for working in confined space and just uh, fitting those pit props. Now when British forestry uh, I read a book called Falling for it and it's about an apprentice in the 1950s and typically what was done is growing softwoods in a monoculture and uh, the first thinnings so once the trees to get to a certain size you want to reduce the number to allow the bigger ones and stronger ones to survive better and reach a larger size. Now the thinnings were cut up into sections and put on a routing machine and uh, turned into pit props. Whereas the larger trees um, went to sawmills for timber. So really in uh, British forestry your axe isn't the main tool. The majority of the bucking and the felling cut is completed with cross cut saws like you can see behind me. Now the Welsh pattern axe stayed around for quite a while but I think it kind of died out in popularity in, up in Scotland. Up in Scotland uh, the majority of pictures I've seen show these kind of axe which is an American pattern. They're called Yankee patterns um, in most of the old catalogues and again they would use you know five six pound heads. So with the American axes uh, coming in popularity some of the older British patterns died out. What's interesting to note is I've never seen any evidence of a British uh, style maul. I think that really shows the context of British forestry where any timber was large enough to really need a maul to split it. They wouldn't have cut it up into firewood and wasted it. It all went to timber. And uh, besides these are five and six pound um, wedge axes are excellent splitters with the high center line. They don't get stuck and uh, they really really do work well. So anyway that's just a brief uh, introduction to some of the British axe patterns you'll see in this country and uh, why they are like they are.